Today I'm gonna go over removing these valve springs. These are the Texas Speed Dual 660 valve springs with titanium retainers. We're gonna remove them and their locks. And then also I'm pulling out the valves that are in here. I'm gonna go over some weights of the valves. And then also we're gonna talk about some valve spring weights as well. The Texas Speed Dual 660s with titanium retainer and versus the comp conical spring with its titanium retainer as well. We're gonna look at some of those weights. I'm gonna weigh these valves so we can get a look at those and just kind of go over some things with y'all. Some people just throw on some valve springs and throw in some valves and they don't really think about how much they weigh and how they come into play with performance. So if you would please first go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that notifications bell and hit the thumbs up on this video. I sure would appreciate it. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is pull the next set of valve springs. I got this valve spring compressor tool off of Amazon. It's not very expensive, it's like $25 or so. I'll throw up a picture of what it looked like on the app. And the way it goes together is first, you have this little aluminum piece. It's milled out on this backside. So it'll clear the intake port on the back. And then you have two bolts sticking through this metal piece. And if you can see that, this is threaded in there at an angle to put pressure on the valve spring retainers at the correct angle. And then that'll float up on here like this. And as you tighten down that nut, it'll apply pressure. So we're gonna line this up just like this on top of that aluminum plate. Gonna start in our bolts by hand. Make sure they go in straight. Okay. They are a 13 millimeter. on there like that then this top piece is going to line up just like this over these retainers we're going to start to tighten that down see it's starting to tighten down but our locks are still caught here so to get those unlocked we've got to take a hammer and I'm using a 14 millimeter socket you've got to get it spaced over the locks to where it's not going to hit it and we're going to hit it with a hammer and it's going to break it loose Okay, so if you can see that, now there's a gap here in between the locks and the retainer. There'll be a bigger gap as we go down further, but now this one's broke loose. So now we gotta do the same for this one. Okay, we're going to have to push up on the valves, and now you can see the retainers are in there. Let's see if I can get you a close-up of it. As you can see, the retainers are down there. The locks are up high, up on the valve stem, so they're going to come off by hand or you can even use a magnet and you might have to push up on the valve from the bottom 
that's what those locks look like. They're tapered. So the small side goes down, the bigger part up towards the top. Okay. Take our four locks out. Always keep track of all these small parts. Those are steel, so like I said, if they go flying or if you need to, you can use a magnet. And then now we'll back off. Take our tool off, and then our springs will come out. There we go. There's our valve springs right there. All right, so like I said, I'm going to go from the Texas Speed 660 dual springs with their titanium retainers and I'm going to be changing up from those to the comp conical springs they are the 7228 springs let me fire up the scale and we're going to take a look at these weights so if you have a gram scale you can Take a look at your weights on these things really easy. Doesn't have to be a fancy one, just an accurate one. Tear it out to zero. First up, the Texas Speed 660 Duels are 100 grams in weight. All right, and then now we're still teared at zero. The Comp Conical Spring, which is not to be confused with a Beehive or a straight up single spring because the conical starts out big at the bottom and tapers off to the top. Your beehive is going to be all one height to about in here and then go smaller up at the top. So this is just one smooth transition. Also, you have a titanium retainer. You can get titanium or they have a tool steel retainer that's also pretty light. So these are kind of hard to find right now. I had a hard time locating the retainers there was only one place that had them and it weighs 65 grams so the weight of the spring is 35 grams less in weight for this one versus this one now let's see at the very end of our valve where the retainer sits let's weigh it because it's setting at the very end of our valve that's having to be kept still during those valve events when it's going up and down real fast so you've got 10 grams on that one and only five grams on this one so you have half the weight at the end of the valve where it matters the most so that's a big reason for going to these these springs are very tough. They're rated at about 640 lift, which is still plenty. They've got plenty of seat pressure. So they are gonna do the job just fine. Highly recommended to me by Rick Crawford. So I always like to run something lighter weight. You can get more RPM out of them because of the weight and the valve events. Also, you got less weight moving up and down to control so sometimes they can just overall less weight can also be easier on things like your lifters and other valve train items this way this is just a regular standard valve that was in it it weighs about 88 grams okay and then 
This is the intake valve. It weighs about 120 grams. Now I usually like to run, like in my G8, I have a set of LS3 hollow stem valves that are back cut, meaning that at the back end of this lip, it's back cut back here as it's riding over the edge, which gives you more flow as soon as it starts to open. And those valves are said to weigh around 90 grams from what I researched. So I'm going to work on getting a set of LS3 hollow stem valves and save 30 grams there and save another 35 grams on the spring for a total of 65 grams of weight savings, which will be pretty huge. So I thought y'all might find that interesting. The next thing I'm going to do as well is we're going to pull these valve stem seals. So when you run a conical valve spring, you have to run a different valve uh, stem seal. These are a little different. The easiest way to take these off is just going to be with a pair of channel locks. You can do it nice and easy. You don't have to grab it to where it bends it. You're just going to easily work it up. Like I said, you don't have to damage it or anything. This just presses right over the valve guide and then your rubber up here at the top provides the seal and then if they shim them at all there'll be a shim up underneath it so there's only one shim right here besides that one I'll go ahead and take out another one I'm just gonna grab it nice and easy rock it side to side some will be tighter some will be a little bit more loose and again, they put a shim underneath it, and you've got the valve stem seal. So I'll show you real quick what the uh, what the valve stem seals look like for the conical spring. It looks like this right here. So it's just a smaller valve stem seal that doesn't have the big hat at the bottom and doesn't sit up as tall. So if you're interested, there's the part number on the valve stem seals. And then like I said, valve springs. are a 7228-16. And let's see the locks. The locks are a 772-16. I'm sorry, those were the uh, Retainers. The retainers are 77216. And then the locks, if you want to get a set of locks for these, is 623 16. So you will, like I said, save some weight if you go that route. And also, you never want to overspring for your cam. So I'm not saying that you should run. Takes a speed or Brian Tooley 660 duels. If you're running a low lift cam to where you only have like 550 lift or something like that, then you might pick something else. So I also run lightweight springs in the G8. I run Beehive PSI 1511 ML springs and they're lightweight spring, but I also have a low lift cam in the G8. So hopefully y'all learned something or found it interesting anyways. I'm not saying not to ever not run dual springs, but this is just my personal choice, some research that I've done on them, asking uh, people such as Rick Crawford, who I think is very smart, uh, asking him what he would run, and just 
done some research and weighing things and try to keep your valve train light, especially if you're looking for performance. So, like I said, please hit that like button and subscribe, and hopefully y'all found it useful. I'll see about doing another video later on, maybe when I'm installing the conical springs and maybe the LS3 hollow stem valves and putting it all back together.